Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Jaws of Hakan. In the last episode, we finally made a start on clearing out these Hakanite camps. Now, we just have two left, and I believe... Yeah, we can, we can just follow the river around. That, that makes the most sense. So let, oh, I saw the spider and then I saw movement and I was like, a big spider? No, it's fine. It's fine. We're okay. God, there are so many of them. Why are there so many of them? Still, you have to die. You have to die. Because you're weird and I don't like you. Go down, come on. They left me stuff. At least they were polite. Thank you, spiders. I, I know it's rude to kill things because they're weird and they freak you out, but I mean, that, that seems as good enough reason for Sarah to be mage-phobic, so that... I figure that justifies my treatment of the spiders. Oh, Lord. There we go. Done it, there we go. Excuse you, get over here. And who's who is left? Oh we've we've triggered them. We've triggered them. Okay. Okay, in we go. Spinny's quick. Get that. God, oh god, what's happening? What's happening? I can't see. I'm too close. You do not seem to be doing anything, so if if you could help out, that'd be great, thanks. Get out. Stun him. Stun him. There we go. Who's that? Oh, hello there. You're right. Okay, lovely jubbly. Two out of three. Done and dusted. Okay. There we go. And onwards to the last camp. Oh, my. Why? Why are you like this? You could have left well enough alone. And you wouldn't be dead. On him. There we go. Just, just think, if you'd left me alone, if you'd left me alone, then you'd still be alive to do spider shit. But no, no, you had to get involved. Now then. Oh, right there. You're right, lads. involved this is... why why did this happen why did this happen oh but you know what i'm gonna just focus on you anyway as i was saying yeah it's all oh it, it's very funny could be fewer happy castles around here it's funny what sarah said but again like, mages are good enough for me to make fun of, but when I'm not making fun of them, I'm being mage-phobic. It's like, great, Sarah. N nice work. Good job. 
But yeah, go off about the Dalish for being racist. Oh yeah, that's terrible, but your mage phobia. Mm-hmm, completely fine. Okay, anyone else? Did anyone else do me the courtesy of dropping stuff? No. Oh, hello. Don't mind if I do. Thank you kindly. Lovely. Pardon me, guys. Okay. There we go. Good stuff. Yeah, let's let's travel back down here. Report back. Uh, Pharaoh? Inquisitor. Yep, the river's secure. The Hakonites will push back from the river. That will put mines at ease, sir. I'll arrange patrols for the area. It's no Imperial Highway, but we'll see people along as safely as we can. Good stuff. That will be all, Lieutenant. Sir. Fantastic. Hey. Place, oh, it is. Oof. Oh, yeah, I, I think I'd, I'd have to agree with that. The approach is the desert. No, no, thank you. I, I do not deal well with the heat. Let's set that as active and then travel over here there we go and with with that final camp that should be the whole of this map revealed i do believe again it's this lift oh hold up was this I see you down there, but it, um, oh, shit. I guess we're going this way. Um, what I was about to say is I, we killed the lurker. We killed the gurg. Oh no, this is the spider. I don't, I don't like, no, no, fucking look at it. No, no. Why are you like this? Why are you like this? Why did it have to be you? Oh lord, oh lord, I don't like it. I do not like it. Guard up. And then spinny spin. Keep going. Grab it. And stun it if you can. Get in there. Stun it, there we go. Ground pound. Kill it. Kill it soon. Oh my god, we made it friendly? No, we have to kill it. We have to kill it though. We need it skin. Where are you going? I mean, I'll kill your babies in the meantime, but still. Oh god, I don't, where, where am I? What's happening? Go, go, why? What are you trying to kill? Face these. Face these. They're right here. Spin, spin. You're down. Oh god, oh god. I don't like this view. Oh god, where's, where's the big bastard gone? Where's the... That's a problem. We need that one. That's the one we have to kill. Okay, oh, you've, you've died in here there. That's lovely. That's totally not cursed. You're up there. Where's... It ran off this way last I saw. Okay, there we go. It ran off here. Okay, good stuff. For a minute then, I, I thought the quest had glitched because someone had befriended the spider and I was about to say, please no. There we go. So give it to the hole and make Finn's life shift. Or give it to Finn. We help him. Not ask him. Do it. We've been permitted to bend tradition. It may be best to tread carefully. Again, just... You're not so scary, Vivi. Maybe I can't bug you, but you can't bug me neither. 
My dear, I have not attempted to bug you. <laughs> yes, you have. I assure you, I have not. You really well tried, and it hasn't friggin' worked. Got it? Of course, sir, dear. I understand completely. The fact that you're insisting that she hasn't bugged you means that she has Sarah. And just, just start screaming. If someone isn't paying attention to what you're saying, just start screaming because that's an appropriate response. I get this. This is why I'm like learning to argue is a vitally important skill. Oh, thank you kindly. That is very, very nice. If you, if you never learn to argue, you could have the most correct argument that you're trying to make. Let's say you're arguing that racism is bad. That is one of the most obvious statements you can make. If you can't argue, if your only response is racism is bad and, and, and you're a bitch, then your, your argument is null and void. You've just lost that. You've you've somehow managed to lose an argument of is racism bad? Like ha I Cause Sarah does have good points. She has some excellent points that she makes, but because Vivienne knows how to argue, and she is she is more intelligent than Sarah. I wouldn't necessarily say she's cleverer. Sarah has common sense on her side, I think. And she's a lot more in touch with the common man than Vivienne is. Um, but v Vivienne has those book smarts. She knows how to argue. And Sarah, it, it just doesn't compute for her. It doesn't compute. And as such, her only course of action is to start throwing insults. And it's just like, c congratulations, you had a point. You did have a point, but now you've lost the argument because you don't know what you're doing. Where is this? Where am I? Oh, hello. That's the mystery of winter. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just explore this way. Don't mind me. Hmm. I'm going to assume that that um that landmark is on top of us somewhere that would make sense Kale's reach. The fog came on swiftly, cloaking the world in shadow and turning the stones beneath our feet into a treacherous slick. I knew we had to find shelter before we lost even that faint light. We stumbled on, following Ragnar's broad painted back, and arrived at an ancient Tevin's temple just as the last of daylight left us. Ragnar instructed us to pitch our shelters beneath the entrance passageway and warned us not to wander too deep into the ruin. His voice was an uneasy whisper, and I knew at once that he was afraid. Wary of alarming the rest of our expedition, I took Ragnar aside and spoke to him. Some of the Avar, he said, believed the temple to be the haunt of old, vengeful spirits. The Tevinta had come here long ago and built their great temples, and then one day, without warning, they had abandoned them all. Ragnar was convinced that they had done something terrible here, though he would not tell me what it was. Whatever the reason, he found the temple deeply disturbing and had brought us to it only out of desperation. I slept fitfully that night. Once I opened my eyes to see a pulsating amber light from beyond a second doorway. I blinked and it was gone. In the morning the fog had lifted and I wasn't sure if I had really seen the light or dreamed it. From the travel journals of Sir Nigel, Explorer and Knight. Very interesting now. We yeah, found I can, something I can... they don't want found. I, 
Except I don't, I don't need to fight them. I'm gonna come back here. Sir, I was about to leave. I just wanted the, uh, I just wanted the landmark. He's coming out. Okay, Jesus, he's big. Flipping heck. Stun him. And okay, you know what? Considering I'm at full focus, one of them, if you please. And now just beat him. Beat his ass. the door um here's what i'm thinking i'ma just i'ma just go back the way i came i think um yeah, it doesn't look like there's any codex entries here i mean even if there is i'm gonna come back here in the future this is this is a story location so if i if i miss anything i'll always come back a yoink and a yoink. I forgot to go grab the trials rewards. Whoops. Oh well, it'll it'll be waiting for us when we get back. It's no bother. Okay, yeah, there was, there was all this stuff under here. I noticed a ladder. Yeah, I'd I'd rather go back and see what I left behind. Down this way. And I do believe there was some Avar at the end of this corridor. Oh, that's, that's stone, that's fine. Okay, yeah, what are we... Hello. What are we dealing with? Excuse you. Get back to... Stunned. Don't mind if I do. Just, just leave him be. Just leave him be. Ex 
excuse who Oi! Stop that! Stop being a hoe! Bat! And there we go! Done and dusted! And the door is open! And there we go. I was about to say, yeah, cold resistance. Lovely. Now there should be. I have in my head that there was a codex entry in here somewhere. And it, right there. Gelderon's claim. The script is an ancient elven dialect. Upon further observation, it twists, the words becoming visible. There are no gods. There is only the subject and the object, the actor and the acted upon. Those with will to earn dominance over others gain title not by nature, but by deed. I am Gelderan, and I refuse those who would exert will upon me. Let Andoril's... Andor I'm, I'm speaking very oddly. I do apologise. It's the heat. The heat is getting to me. Let me take a sip. There we go. Okay. I am Gelderan, and I refuse those who would exert their will upon me. Let Andrewil's bow crack. Let Junae's fire grow cold. Let them build temples and lure the faithful with promises. Their pride will consume them. And I, forgotten, will claim power of my own, apart from them, until I strike in mastery. So Gelderan is one of the forgotten ones. It's Gelderan, like Anaris, and then some other ones. Basically, this is um, this is one of the group that the Elven Gods was apparently warring against in the old stories. I love that. I love that. I'm so intrigued. I want to know more. I want to know what that's about. And a yuke. Okay. okay let's, let's see if we can claim this. I'm looking at my timer. I've got about five minutes left. So fingers crossed. That should be enough time. Okay, so we have we have stairs going up that way. Let me just see what was. Oh, God. So why are you like this? There we go. That's what you get. That's what you get. Okay, there's the camp. Smack him. Ooh. I do I do find that so amusing. It's so dumb, but it's so amusing seeing these animals just fly off. No, you're, you're guarding a sack, so you have to die. to stop. This is not okay. This is our camp. It's not yours. Stun him. Stun him. Stun him. There we go. Spin. Get back. Okay, there we go. There we go. What are we fighting now? Flipping it. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, little friend. You didn't deserve to die. You were lovely. You were wonderful. Oh, the sorrow. 
the sorrow in my heart every time a Tusket gets killed. Up we go. I hope that one didn't see. It probably did. Oh, God. I'll never forgive myself. And a yoink. There we go. Lovely work. Now, we do still need to uncover this part of the map. Let's put that there. However, after that, we only have... You know, a father's name, and then what yet lingers, the main quest. Ooh. Hold up, that isn't. Is that something? Is that... I'm gonna assume that's not a quest. Maybe. I don't know. Either way, we need to explore the camp. You're right. And, ooh, don't mind if I do. A good marriage. In a hold past our own, a man named Vermic Torson was wed to a woman named Cedra Yild's daughter. They were young and in love, and made large offerings to the gods asking for happiness. The night before their wedding, Cedra had a dream. The Lady of the Skies came to her and told her to tie her rope knots so tightly that she and Torson would only wed a year. She awoke troubled, but did as the Lady asked. Vermic untied only one knot, and they married a year. The year was hard. Their bows missed game, and the winter wind howled through their huts. Vermic and Cedra grew thinner. When the marriage was up, they made large offerings to the gods, this time asking for mercy. The night before the wedding, the Lady of the Skies came to Vermic in a dream, and told him to untie a single knot, so he and Cedra would wed only a year. Vermic awoke sorrowing but did as the lady asked. He and Cedra married again for a year. The year was long. The weather was foul and the crops were poor. Vermic and Cedra grew thinner still. When their marriage time was up, Cedra and Vermic both had a dream from the Lady of the Skies. You asked for happiness, she said, but I cannot give that to you. You asked for mercy, but the land will not show it. Think carefully what you ask tomorrow. Cedra and Vermic spoke long into the night and in the morning made an offering to the gods. They asked for strength to hunt and harvest when life was good and patience when life was not. The year was good in some places and hard in others, but they grew to know themselves and what they could bear. They became happy, not from the gift of the gods, but from their own deeds and lived the rest of their lives as one. From Stories of the Wild South, a collection of tales from the barbarian nations of Ferelden by Lady Susanna Ashwell of Arnsberg. There are notes at the bottom margin of this page in different handwriting. How does a rope tell you how long you marry? An Aval groom unties knots on a rope that the bride ties for him. He's got until the end of the wedding chant. Number of knots he unties is the number of years they're married. That doesn't make any sense. Sounds like a good deal to me. See if you like living with your handsome new husband or wife once the bloom's worn off. Maybe you only untie one knot or tie them tight, like in the story, if you're not sure. I think it's daft. I think you two nitwits should stop scribbling in the book I've got to return to the library. Oh, how do- You can't be writing in library books, how dare! Much offence, that is- that is terribly rude. And anything over here. Hello? Oh, thank you. From a mage's journal. I argued with the Avar mage long into the night. If we'd had no truce with these barbarians to fight the Darkspawn, it would have come to blows. Their conception of the Maker is as a child's. They assume he is a spirit and that we have displeased him because he answers none of your prayers. When I attempted to explain the doctrine of the chant, the mage kept asking nonsense such as, did Andraste have no gods of her own? Or, why haven't you sung up another maker? I asked what in the good grace of Theda she was on about, and the answers chilled me. The Avar confused spirits for gods, treating them as patrons to be lulled and wooed. The mage described, to my growing horror, how the Avar deliberately invoke spirits for strength in battle or solicit them for advice. 
The maid claimed some of the spirits around her village had lived with her hold for a dozen generations and sometimes took on the form of an animal or departed relatives when they pass on their wisdom. Strangest of all, in the event a god is destroyed, the Avar begin a year-long time of offerings and prayers and rituals I have no interest in knowing about further. At the end of this period, a new spirit takes on the name and role of the old one. I attempted to explain that this was not a god, merely a spirit drawn in by their desires. The Avar mage declared, with a ridiculous air of superiority, that that was the point. If she hadn't saved my life a day ago from a rampaging herlock, I'd take it all to the Templars. From the private journal of Elena Alanesh, a mage serving in the Ferelden army during the Fifth Blight. Again, again just, just because their beliefs are different doesn't make them stupid. Sarah, you'd, you'd probably get on really well with that, Elena. Al although she's a mage, so actually, no, you'd probably hate her just on principle. <laughs> I'm not going to apologise for being salty. I'm not going to apologise. I put up with her all throughout Inquisition. I what sort of eye patch we should get you. I think gold inlaid with glowing lyrium and amethysts. Oh, hadn't thought of it like that, ma'am. Okay, okay, Vivienne wants to gift Iron Bull an eye patch. that's nice. And yeah, I've, I've put up with Sarah long enough, not complaining, I get to complain now. That's the rule. It's during the DLC I get to complain. Alrighty then, I'm gonna leave off right here. In the next one, we explore this area of the map a little bit and then make our way back down to Finn and, you know, maybe give him the offering. Oh, the Huntsman. You never know. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.